Welcome to the Kuya Dev Tidbits Podcast, where we explore the ins and outs of building a successful career in the tech industry. My name is Rem, your Kuya Dev, and I'm excited to have you join me for this episode. Whether you're just starting out, looking to shift careers into tech, or hoping to grow more as a tech professional, this podcast is for you. Thank you for tuning in, and together, let's enjoy the episode. One of the largest, and maybe even the oldest, problem in the tech industry is the mismatch between the skills of fresh computer science graduates and what the industry really needs. So, merong malaking disconnect between academe and industry. And through the years, my uh, thoughts about this problem has changed paiba-iba uh, every year, every month. But at this current stage, I think mas naiintindihan ko na kung bakit. The fundamental flaw in what the academe is teaching and what the expectations are by the students and by employers are very different. Sobrang ang laki ng, ano, ng, ng, ng disconnect between all parties involved. So, academe is thinking na siguro what, their, what skills they're teaching the students is what the industry needs. And ito naman yung mga estudyante, the students, they are expecting na what the academy is teaching in college will be, or they trust that the academy will be teaching them what the industry needs. Na pagka-graduate nila, they have the skills to be employable. And ganun din naman yung expectation ng industry. Na dapat, Yung mga graduates nyo, ready yan. They have the skills that we need. But, apparently, hindi ganun na nangyayari. So, medyo, ano rin, um, may katigasan din ang ulo siguro yung academe na hindi nila maamin na hindi nila na fulfill yung end of their bargain. Tapos, si industry, sobrang alam naman na may problema. Na ito nga, si Akadim, kulang. Kulang yung itinuturo sa mga estudyante. So, nababalitaan nyo rin siguro sa mga, sa mga articles na a lot of these companies are devising plans to circumvent or uh, totally bypass the academic requirements of their uh, technical positions, or technical careers. So, gumagawa sila ngayon ng paraan para maka-hire ng mga tao na qualified naman even without the necessary degree, like ano, uh, computer science. So, Dinadrop na nila yung requirement for a, cu- a computer science degree or a CSIT degree. Kasi naisip nila, hindi naman kailangan no? para sa needs ng mga companies nila, like Google, Amazon, hindi naman nila kailangan na may degree yung tao. Basta lang andun yung skills, mapatunayan niya na andun yung skills, pwede na. Pwede na i-hire yan. Kaya nga rin nagsilputan yung mga, ano, yung mga bootcamps na yan eh. Dahil pwede naman. At kaya rin naman, katulad ko, isang career shifter, nakapasok sa, sa tech industry without relevant 
without any relevant degree. No? Pati yung mga nai-interview natin sa podcast, may mga si si yung susunod nga natin i-interview din si ano si uh, si Philip. He came from pharmacy. So nakapasok siya sa tech industry, di ba? And he's making waves. Sobrang galing ng taong yun. And he, he didn't need a computer science degree to get into into the tech industry. So bakit ganun, di ba? Parang bakit pa tayo pumapasok sa college to get a CS degree kung pwede naman palang hindi? Which is a valid question. It is a really valid question. Bakit nga ba? So actually, kung ako tatanungin nyo, lugi yung mga kumukuha ng four-year degree. Kasi, although medyo, ano to, medyo risky, there's always a risk. But if you self-study, one year, two years, makakakuha ka ng trabaho eh. Di ba? May risk nga lang, di ba? Na baka hindi mangyari, but it's possible without even getting into college. Basta you know what to study. No? Basta targeted yung, 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 yung study plan mo. Nakakabuo ka ng portfolio. Kaya eh. Kaya. And I know people who don't have a degree at all. Hindi man lang pumasok ng college. Nakakuha ng trabaho sa tech industry. So, if you'd think na parang sayang naman yung pupunta, ano, kung ang purpose ko is makakuha ng trabaho sa tech industry, Sayang naman yung magiging effort ko at ibabayad ko sa college kung hindi rin naman mapufulfill yung promise nila na maakuha ko ng trabaho pagka-graduate ko. Kasi, pagka-graduate ko, yung skills na nakuha ko, hindi yun yung kailangan ng industry. Ngayon, puntahan natin yung sa tingin ko, yung pinakadahilan bakit hindi mag-match yung skills na nakukuha ng mga computer science students dun sa kailangan ng industry. So, sa tingin ko, ah, computer science kasi is different from software engineering. So, computer science is what's, it is what is being taught sa college. Computer science. It's more on the theories. It's more heavy on math. Not much on implementation. Not, hindi ka tuturuan masyado ng programming dyan. Eh. Ituturo sa'yo yung concepts around Computers, what makes computers work? No? And what makes computers tick? May onting hardware, pero mostly about algorithms and math. Heavy on math. And I'm realizing that now kasi I've been taking courses on uh, data structures and algorithms. Eh. And uh, courses in machine learning na sobrang heavy sa math. And I realized na ang laki rin ng kulang ko sa math ngayon. Kaya medyo kailangan ko yatang isupplement yung inaaral ko with uh, with uh, linear algebra and discrete math. Yung mga ganun na uh, kailangan for computer science. Pero those things and you don't no, for sabi nating uh, roughly 70 to 90% ng industry, hindi kailangan yun. What industry needs are software engineers. People who apply uh, computer concepts, yung mga inaaral sa, on think computer science siguro, but more on how do you implement something para makabuo ng program, or makabuo ng application, na hindi tinuturo sa Bachelor of Science in Computer Science. Hindi tinuturo yan. I mean, may mga university na tinuturo yan. Uh, let me correct myself. But not all. Onting-onti lang sila. Actually, nitong nakaraang araw, mahilig ako magtatambay sa Reddit eh. Sa R... Uh, PH Programmers? Kalimutan ko. Oh, programming PH. Programming Philippines. Uh, pero may nag-post doon, allegedly... He is an Ateneo student. And uh, 
a, a current student of computer science. As nagrereklamo siya, but wala daw tinuturo sa kanilang programming at all. And even na uh, wala tinuturo sa kanila, professors are uh, are expecting na makabuo sila ng mga projects. No? Na pinrogram nila, no? Without knowing. Which I get the point. No, I get the point. Pero, yun nga, ang expectation ng estudyante is pagpasok niya sa, sa college, ituturo niyo sa kanila yan. Pero apparently, ang laki na mismatch dun sa expectation versus dun sa curriculum, which is the reality. No? Expect- expectation versus reality. <laughs> Yung curriculum, it was not designed to teach people how to code. It's designed for people to know the math behind the code. To know the math behind the algorithms. To know the algorithms. To understand algorithms. Which is very essential naman pagka nasa field ka na, pagka nag-optimize ka na ng mga bagay-bagay. But that doesn't happen pretty often. Sobrang, kahit, kahit ako, uh, since shifting, I'm, I think, Magka six years na ako. Actually, six years na yata ako in the tech industry uh, at the time of this recording. And sobrang bihira yung instances na kailangan ko mag-optimize ng system. Kasi usually, talagang hindi naman yun yung ano, yun yung um, focus ng business. That's, that seldom happens. Mangyayari yan, kunwari, sa mga malalaki talaga na tech, uh, tech companies, but not really. Uh, tulad ng siguro, Google, siguro kung member ka ng Google Mind, di ba? Or uh, part ka ng Google Mind team, yung bumubuo ng AI research nila, siguro, oo. Or if you're the one behind, or you're part of the people behind uh, Google Search, of course, you need to optimize a lot of things there. Kasi you're you're uh, practically scurrying the whole web and creating uh, or ranking them, di ba? Ranking yung mga search results na yan. At napakahirap niyan. We have what, gazillions <laughs> of web pages, websites all over the internet. And Google somehow has to rank that. Kung kasama ka dun sa team na yon, oo, oh, oh, kailangan mo ng knowledge sa algorithms and the math behind computer science. Kailangan yun. But for the normal tech professional, rarely that does happen. Does that happen? Kasi, yun nga, yun only the, that usually pagka malaking, malaking, malaking scale na talaga ng company. Google scale. Usually, pagka uh, sa mga normal na companies, instead of optimizing, tataasan na lang yung, ano, eh, yung allocation. So, sobrang mura ng compute ngayon, sobrang mura ng cloud resources, you choose to just dagdagan na lang yung resources eh, instead of ano, eh, uh, finding ways to optimize. Eh. Tapos mabilis kasi. Tapos mabilis na uh, i-execute kesa yung mag-iisip ka pa, mag, mag, mag uh, Uh, mag-aalat ka pa ng resources, bibigyan, pagbibigyan mo pa ng oras, pag research pa yung tao, it's a, uh, mas mahal, mas ano pa, mas, mas uh, economical pa para sa businesses na, yun nga, allocate compute, no? cloud compute, kesa, yun nga, mag-allocate ka ng tao. But of course, may mga times talaga na kailangan, but again, it's very rare. And a lot of the um, things that we use in the industry, yung mga frameworks, uh, systems, yung mga gumagawa niyan, usually naka-optimize naman na. Wala kang halos gagawin eh. Di ba? Pagka third party na ano yan, open source na project, usually naka-optimize na yan. Hindi mo na kailangang ano yun pa, uh, i-optimize further. Yung mga database na yan, naka-optimize na yung mga yan madalas. Kung ano man yung iniisip nyo, naisip na nila. Kasi sila yung vendors eh. That's their business. 
your business is not to optimize databases, not to optimize a lot of things. Your business is, for example, sa, ano namin, sa case namin, our business is to get students better careers. Yun ang business namin. Hindi namin business mag-optimize. <laughs> Kung kailangan namin mag-optimize, mag-research na kami na ano, or mag-consult kami doon sa vendor, paano namin pabibilisin to? Sila na magbibigay ng, ng solution sa amin, di ba? Hindi na namin kailangan isipin yun. Binabayaran namin sila, eh, di ba? Medyo na- napalayo ako, but let's go back. Ayun nga. So, academy is teaching computer science. Industry needs software engineers. Magkaibang magkaiba yun. Siguro naman, nuggets nyo naman dun sa naging kwento ko kung gaano kaiba yun. Di ba? And usually naman, ang computer scientists, they should end up, or often, they should probably end up in academe and research. Kasi yun, dun talaga heavy yun. Ano eh. Dun talaga kailangan na kailangan ng math. Again, balik tayo sa Google, sa Google Mind. I don't know if available, ano pa sila, uh, existing pa. But I think they are. Sila yung AI branch ng, ano eh, ng Google. Eh. But if you're in Google Mind, that's research. They need computer scientists there. Di ba? Pero pagka isang, yung, yung app na binubuo nyo, crud, kailangan nyo ba yung computer science doon? Di ba? Di masyado. Bihira, yun. So what we need probably is a bachelor in science in software engineering. Yun yung pasukin nyo. If you're uh, senior high and thinking of getting into tech and you want to go into college pa rin, and you should, no? you should pa rin, look for bachelor of science in software engineering, not computer science. Yun talaga, sobrang it's closer, much closer to what the industry needs than computer science. Now, kung, kasi halos parang wala ako nababalita ang software engineering course sa Pilipinas eh. I, I'm sure meron, but uh, I'm not familiar. But from the top schools, wala, wala silang ganun eh. Di ba? Imagine, di ba? Ateneo. Nagreklamo yung sadyante, di ba? Ang laki-laki na binabayad nila ron. Then so, parang feeling niya, wala siya natutunan. Like, sayang yung binabayad niya. Mag, nung panahon ko, early 2000s, parang 50,000 per SEM. Siguro, o, ano na ngayon? Times 3? I don't know. 150,000 per SEM? No idea, but mahal. <laughs> mahal sa atin eh, yun. Back then, yung 50,000 na yun, early 2000s, malaki yun. <laughs> and uh, buti na lang may, ano ako nun eh, may educational plan. So, medyo kinakaya, but still. Um, so, yun nga, bihira rin yung BS Software Engineering sa Pilipinas. So, what do you do if you really want? to go to college but still be um, marketable or yung skills mo up to market pa rin. No? Yung pa rin yung pagka-graduate mo, yun yung kailangan ng industry. The ideal scenario here is habang nag-take ka ng BSCS or kahit na ah, sige, IT, computer engineering, uh, honestly, hanggang ngayon, hindi ko pa rin maintindihan pagkakaiba, but, you know, alam ko lang sa computer science, talagang heavy sa math. IT, more on infrastructure. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Com- uh, computer engineering, more on hardware. Di ba? That's what I, what's, what, what, what I understand uh, the differences. But uh, don't, uh, uh, don't take my word for it. Hindi ako masyadong familiar. But, sa computer science, I know, talagang, more on the theories, the math, the research, yun talaga sa computer science. Na pinipilit nilang, pinipilit nilang iyak ma sa industry. Hindi talaga, hindi talaga siya eh. Para dun eh. <laughs> hindi siya software engineering. There are computer science courses na, or programs na may 
subject focused on software engineering. May mga ganun eh. But still, one one subject, it's not enough. Hanggang ngayon, ako, ang dami kong inaaral, software engineering lang. Ha? How to scale uh, stuff. no? Architecture, clean code, how to how to optimize sprints how to optimize ano um uh, task allocation estimation ano pa nga lang eh um proper git management pa nga lang di ba yung version control system napakalagang bagay niyan pagka nagkamali kayo diyan letche letche yung ano nyo, yung yung code base nyo. so it's more on building an application and making it uh, maintainable, reliable, and scalable. Yung scalable part, may onting computer science doon, pero ang daming solutions sa labas eh. <laughs> I-adapt mo na lang, hindi na ikaw yung mag-iisip eh, di ba? Hahanap ka na lang ng solution dyan or magkoconsult ka ng iba eh. Ganun na lang yung ginagawa kasi eh. Hindi na ikaw mismo yung gagawa ng algorithms eh. Although I do that, magka ano talaga, pero bihirang bihira. Project management, di ba? May onting project management. Things that a computer science program doesn't teach you. No? Parang layo talaga, sobrang layo. Na nakaka-frustrate para sa lahat. At pinakalugi talaga, Oh, but, uh, syempre, lugi yung mga employers But lugi talaga yung masadyante Nagbayad sila They are expecting Na pagka-graduate nila Nagaanta yung trabaho But it turns out and then, this, ha- this happens a lot Pagka-graduate nila Magbabayad pa ulit sila para sa bootcamp no? na- 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 Napapalala pa yung gastos eh. Di ba din dumiretso na lang sila sa bootcamp Kung kailangan talaga di ba? Doon din, pa- din din pala sila babagsak So ayun, <laughs> nalayo na naman ako. What a, an aspiring um, tech professional can do who wants to go to college is, you know, sige, wala talaga software engineering na course, walang mahanap. Computer science, sige. Kasi makakatulong pa rin naman talaga siya. No? Basta alam mo yung value na gusto mo makuha sa kanya, aware ka na hindi siya, hindi siya yung... Hin- yung kailangan ng industry talaga, okay lang, kunin mo. But, the ideal scenario is, your mindset dapat kapareho ng career shifter. Isipin mo yung computer science, walang ano, na completely wala siyang kinalaman dun sa industry na gusto mong puntahan. Na although you're, no, it's very related, di ba? It's related. But the skills that you will be acquiring isn't the same skills na kailangan ng industry. Tanggapin mo na agad yun. Na oo, yung matututunan mo sa computer science, makakatulong naman talaga in the future. You know? At the times na may mga pangangailangan talaga mag-optimize, create new algorithms, solve problems with uh, efficient algorithms. Oo, makakatulong siya. And may mga, darating din yung mga oras na yun. But, for the 70-90% of your career, hindi talaga siya yung para doon. So, yun nga. Approach it with the mindset of a career shifter. Isipin mo na lang na parang yung course na kinukuha mo is music na sobrang layo doon sa gusto mong puntahang industry. No? Music, medicine, whatever. Kasi pag ganun yung mindset mo, hahanap ka ngayon ng paraan para ma-acquire yung skills na kailangan ng industry. And how do you do that? The best way, I think, is to self-study. Yes, may bootcamp, that's an option, kung talaga nahihirapan ka. But the best way is self-studying. Kasi in the industry naman, pagka nakapasok ka na, most probably, although your collaboration is always there, may mga tutulong sa'yo, but you know how to self-study. Or, you have to know how to self-study. 
every day, every day, almost every day of my career, nag-self-study ako at work. Kasi may mga problems na andyan na di mo namang kabisado. You, ha- you are familiar. No? You have some idea. But you don't really know how to execute. Or hindi mo memorize yung mga syntax. O kung ano yung meron na API na yun. Kung ano yung complete na API niya. Kung kaya ba nito yung... Kaya, kaya ba ng ganitong library yung gusto mong gawin. All those you have to study on the job. No? Hindi siya maituturo ng kahit sino sa'yo. Sa, in, sa, sa, sa college. And even in bootcamps. Hindi siya, hindi siya, hindi, wala, they don't know. No? They have no idea what kind of what kinds of technology talaga yung, yung gagamitin and what kinds of problems uh, ang mga lalabas dun sa papasokan mong kumpanya. Kasi iba-iba yan. Iba-iba yung business domain yan. Iba-iba yung market nila. Iba-iba yung problems nila. May common problems, but there are always large nuances. No? Like si Lazada and Shopee, although they are competitors, but pinapagpinasok mo sa loob yan, magkaiba yung problems nila technically. Yung ar- architecture nila, magkakaiba. So, parang f- fingerprint yan eh. Magkakaiba yung fingerprint. Magkakaiba rin yung problema sa loob. Siguro yung isa, kung magamit ng, ng MongoDB, yung isa, gumagamit ng SQL. So, magkaiba, magkaiba na agad yung problema nun. Those are very different databases. No? And database paradigms. So, yun. The best way talaga, no? okay, pursue mo yung college degree, computer science, but treat is treated as a separate or as an unrelated uh, degree to, to what you're pursuing, which is software engineering. Tapos, yun nga, self-study. Di lang siya nag apply sa software engineering. It also applies ngayon, it's happening na eh, sa data science industry. Which is also tech. Because people are realizing na you don't really need data scientists. What you need are data engineers. Again, engineering versus science. Di ba? If you you watch if you watch the Big Bang Theory, may ano yun, di ba? Parang running gag ni Sheldon versus I forgot the engineer. Harang minamalit niya yung engineer. Pero they're both very valuable in society. Diba? Sheldon, as a scientist, he he is responsible for creating those uh, those laws, those theories na ina-apply ng engineer. Sa tech, ganun din. Ganun din yan. So, yung mga computer scientists, sila yung mga nag-aral talaga ng mga theories, nag-develop na algorithms, na i-apply ngayon ng mga software engineer. Uh, ito, ay, may ano. So, di naman niya kailangan kung malama kung alin yung mas, ano, basta yung, alin yung gumagana, no? as fast enough, agamitin na ng engineer yan. As long as it solves the problem. Ganon din na nangyayari ngayon sa data science. Medyo influx pa eh. Pero nakikita mo na ngayon yung yung mga job postings leaning towards data, data engineers na eh. You don't really need data scientists eh. Although, ang nangyayari, yung mga data scientists, nagiging data engineers. Kasi nga, yun yung ano eh. That's what the job needs, di ba? Sila ngayon yung magde-deploy ng mga models, di ba? Sa, so, mga data scientists yung bubuo ng mga models, data engineers sila yung magde-deploy. But na nangyayari kasi parang full stack eh. But that's another topic siguro for another episode na maganda rin pag-usapan. So with that, thank you and I'll see you next episode. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Kuya Dev Tidbits Podcast. I hope it will be helpful to you in your tech career journey. Remember, building a successful career in tech takes time and dedication. But with the right mindset and resources, anything is possible.
If you enjoyed this episode, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends and colleagues. And if you have comments, suggestions, or any questions or topics you'd like to hear more about, feel free to email me at rem at kuya.dev. I'd also love to hear your own stories and experiences. So don't be shy, reach out and share them with me. I'm always here to support you in your tech journey. Do also join our community, Tech Career Shifter Philippines at www.techcareershifter.com. Until next time, keep learning, growing, and chasing your dreams. Thank you again for listening, and I'll see you in the next episode.